Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here on this Victory Monday, and I hope you all are having a great, great day. I don't know about you, but I am feeling really good that the Dallas Cowboys did what the experts out there said that they couldn't do, which was get a victory against oh, 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 against the uh, Chargers on the road. And I have to say, I'm very, very proud of us. Now, I, it, by any stretch of the imagination, am I saying that we are now world beaters, that we have everything figured out? Heck no, we do not. We've got actually a long ways to go. But what we have to understand, it, well, first of all, let me deal with the haters. It's almost comical that when we lose, the talking heads all say, the Cowboys are just a bad team. That, you know, they uh, just stink. When they win, they don't give the team any credit whatsoever. They'll always go through and say, well, you know, it wasn't, Colin Cowherd said, you know, it wasn't the Cowboys won the game as much as the Chargers lost it. You know what? Bill Parcell said, you are what your record is. You know, you didn't look at that and say, Tampa Bay's game the week before when the Cowboys were screwed on calls that the NFL literally said we screwed you on calls you didn't say that Tampa Bay was lucky to get that win did you and this is the same thing I posted a video um, uh, a couple hours ago in my workshop and I said so do you give credit to Dak Prescott for winning this game and most people said, oh, no, it was the defense that, that played well. And so, so wait a minute. If you're going to give credit to the defense now, then when they were giving up 36 and a half points a game last year, how come you didn't put blame on the defense as well? How can you put blame on Dak Prescott, who was throwing four or 500-yard passes, literally historically incredible numbers, doing things that no quarterback had done, yet – Instead of saying, well, the defense was bad, special teams weren't bad, you know, were bad, and those are the reasons they lost, they put the blame on Dak. See, this is literally how they move the goalposts and things. Now, I'm about to do something that, one, I did not think I was going to be able to say this year, and this may change. We're still early into the NFL season, and I always say you don't know what the real teams are until October. If you looked at New Orleans last week against Green Bay, you said, oh, my God, watch out, Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston, Mr. Former 30 for 30, he looked good. And then you look at him this week, be it they had a lot of players and coaches out against uh, Carolina, didn't look so good. So we don't know what that team really is yet. But we can start inferring, at least taking the numbers and trying to dig a little bit deeper here. Now, we've been sold about the Washington football team. The Washington football team, oh my God, you know, Ron Rivera, you know, they, they're ready to take that next step. That defense, you're not going to be able to do anything against that defense. They are possibly one of the best teams in the NFC. On the flip side, the Dallas Cowboys defense, they kind of said, hmm, the Dallas Cowboys defense stinks. You know, they only got Dan Quinn, you know, and Dan Quinn, <laughs> he got run out of Atlanta. The Cowboys, yeah, nice offense, but with that defense, they're not going to do anything. Well, lo and behold, I'm going to say right now for the first two weeks at least, the Dallas Cowboys defense is better than the Washington football teams. I know a lot of you right now spitting your drink out and saying, Mark Holmes, I know you drank most of Joe Boo's rum last night. Did you finish the rest of it today? No, I didn't have any more rum since last night. But I'm going through the numbers, guys, and see, this is actually a statistic that we can point to and say it's apples to apples comparison. Because... Right now, here's what's interesting. This is crazy. This is like an alternate universe when you think about this. But right now, if you look at scoring defense, scoring defense, that means how many points your team gives up. Last year, we finished around, oh, 28th. The Dallas Cowboys defense thus far has actually turned it around. 
right now let, let, let me flip the camera here because I want you guys to see this to see that I'm not lying right now as we go through Carolina of course is the best at 10 and a half points New England 11.5 and that's why I say you've got to worry about New England because they always have a great defense Buffalo 11.5 Philadelphia 11.5 but they, they played Atlanta and uh, you know of course San Francisco San Francisco can't score a lot of points um, but they did at least scored a few uh, Denver 13 New Orleans 14 and a half Chargers 18. Chargers doing it up. The Rams at 19 um, are 8th. Pittsburgh 21. Raiders uh, 22 are 10th. San Francisco 22. Cincinnati at 22. The Jets at 22. Arizona at 23. And then, crazy as it is, the Cowboys are 15th at 24. High middle of the pack. Now, we said... The Dallas Cowboys defense doesn't need to be a top 10 defense for the Cowboys to be successful because of the offense. Well, they're top 15. I said if we're top 15 you know, and the offense can stay healthy, that will bode well for this team. We know that we have one of the best offenses in football. Where is Washington right now? Washington is 17th, only a half a point, I'm excuse me, half a point behind us. 24 and a half but here's the thing here's the thing that's crazy is we were told that the Washington defense is head and shoulders above everybody else that they could be a top three defense thus far they're not anywhere close to that and I know what you're saying that well it's only two games but here's the thing that's kind of crazy Chase Young, who was NFL Rookie of the Year on defense, is not starting off really good. And he may heat up. These things may change. This is a week-to-week -week league. I'm just going by the numbers as we stand right now. So when you look at this, Cowboys have given up 30 points to Tampa Bay and 17 points to the Chargers. Washington? They gave up, uh, I, I can't remember the scores, but um, they ended up giving up uh, 29 to the Giants and then 16 to the Chargers, which comes up to 20, uh, 24 and a half. Well, here's what's interesting. The Chargers, I'm sorry, 20 to the Chargers. 20 to the Chargers, not 16. They scored 16. Here's what's interesting is we both play the Chargers. Now, I know it's only three points difference in scoring. But here's the thing. Washington played at home against the Chargers, where the Chargers had to come all the way across the country to face that defense. We played the Chargers at their first game where they actually had a crowd. Their home opener of their new stadium with fans. We went to their house and had to play them. So we actually did better against the Chargers than Washington's defense did against the Chargers. But wait, because you acted now, there's more. Here's what's crazy is the other game that we played was Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay arguably coming off the Super Bowl, could be the best offense in football. Washington's other game was against the New York Giants. The Giants and Tampa Bay's offense should never be confused. Never. Yet, we only gave up one more point to Tampa Bay than Washington did to the Giants. Okay. Okay know what you're saying okay sure but here's where it gets really crazy because the Dallas Cowboys defense has really turned it around in the most key stat in football and that's taking the football away the Dallas Cowboys defense in two games let me pull the statistic because I don't want anybody to call me a liar the Cowboys lead the NFL 
with six takeaways. Six takeaways. Washington, they're way down on the list here with two. And that, my friends, is the biggest takeaway that you can have on defense. Sorry. And red zone defense, believe it or not, the Dallas Cowboys are ninth on red zone defense. And this is just the beginning. And this is two, you know, a game with your two defensive ends out. Your number one safety out. That's almost insane to even think about. And, and let me also say that this is kind of crazy too. Because when we think about the Washington football team's defense, last year they played great. They played great, uh, although they did play some dogs. But you looked at change in coaching, Jack Del Rio coming there, of course, as the defensive coordinator, and Chase Young getting there to help turn that defense around. Because here's what's crazy. I, I, I want to give you the numbers. I, you know I'm a numbers guy. The year before... Washington's defense was 27th on uh, scoring defense, 27th in yardage, 15 in takeaways. Those two changes of Chase Young and um, Del Rio, they went from 27th in scoring defense to four. They went from 27th in yards to second, and they went from 15 to seven in taking the football away. That was a major improvement. Now, so far this year, uh, it's not quite so good. They're 16 in points, 24 in yardage, and 18 in taking the football away. Clearly, and again, it's only two games. It's a small sample size. Wait till October. You'll, you'll get a better take on this. The amazing thing is how one guy and a coach made the difference for Washington. And I'm going to be that guy that says, that could be happening right now with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, everybody kind of always said that, you know, oh, you know, Micah Parsons could be, you know, rookie defensive of the year, kind of like Chase Young was. Okay, we'll see if that happens. For him to go from coming into the Cowboys after not playing football the year before to having been changed from practicing as linebacker, mostly, to having to play defensive end to get a sack and four pressures, and mind you, right now, his pressures were the same amount of pressures that Chase Young has right now this year, too. It's kind of phenomenal. And when you think about the Dallas Cowboys defense last year being 28th in points, the fact that we've already moved down 13 spots to 15. Um, yardage, we're still giving up a lot of yards, but we're you know bending, not breaking. But the takeaways, we were seventh in the end of the year. Most of those takeaways came. Uh, we got 12 and three games, which were really where all those came from. We went from seven to one. This is where you look at this and say, the Dallas Cowboys defense could be taking that major turn, contrary to what the popular uh, uh, thought was from the talking heads that the Cowboys defense was just ass. I will say that when you get to Marcus uh, Lawrence, when you get Randy Gregory back, when you get Navelle Gallimore, and you're able to add all these guys to rotation, and Dan Quinn finding um, ways to better use Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch, because right now you almost have to look at the return of the Mac or the return of the Wolf Hunter and the Predator, because both of those guys played outstanding. That was probably the best game that those two have had definitely last year and this year. And as this team starts to learn exactly what Dan Quinn wants to do and brings in the extra firepower and plays some of these dog teams, you know, we, we got the Eagles this week. We got the Giants. We got Carolina. We got New England. You can look at this and say there's a lot of teams that you're going to feast on and this defense is going to look a lot better than where they were. I'm going to stick to that thing that I said before. In the NFC East, it's hard to repeat. And on average, on average, whether you made the playoffs, of course, or won the Super Bowl, whenever you have won the NFC East, 
on average, the next year the team drops 3.2 games the following year. I don't know if Washington will drop that and be 4-13, and 13, but I don't think that they win the division. So with that being said, you, you know I, I've got to, since it is Eagles week, since it's Eagles week, we need to give a shout out to Philly 500. <laughs> oh, big run! Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, shit. He still won. Oh, 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 now he's about to lose his mind. He hasn't seen the play yet. He hasn't seen the play yet. Show me something like that. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Tune in tonight for our live stream. We'll be talking and breaking down everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. We still made a lot of mistakes. We still found a, made a lot of mistakes, but we found a way to win. And I will catch you later.